Hey there, Chad here again. And today we're going to be talking about the Kubernetes API. So the Kubernetes API is built like a REST API. So it provides a single common interface to deploy applications. And in order to access the API, we use something called RBAC, role-based access control, to enter into the API and go through the authentication, authorization, and admission control process. This API layer provides an abstraction between the uh, resources or objects that we create uh, within the API and the underlying infrastructure. So we don't necessarily have to know as a uh, developer, as a Kubernetes developer, we don't necessarily have to know what infrastructure type or vendor that we're working with. Uh, we just have to know the kubectl commands. And so that provides a lot of ease of use, uh, but also it provides you know an ability to use whatever infrastructure you have or uh, mix and match infrastructure. As we can see here in our diagram, at the very bottom here, there's a bunch of different infrastructure types. So VMware, Microsoft Azure, AWS, et cetera. And then there's the uh, Kubernetes API layer that is above that, which abstracts away all that infrastructure. So we refer to the infrastructure types or the uh, the way that we're addressing the infrastructure as uh, different resources in, in the API. So replica set, cluster role binding, deployment, service, pod, namespace, and network policy, and much, much more. So from a client side or from the developer's perspective, to create this resource, all you do is run the kubectl command and you're able to create these resources, which are the underlying objects that exist on the infrastructure, and you can manage them at the API level. In addition to that, at the very top of our diagram here, we see that there's a registry. And so this registry contains the images that we can pull down, our application artifacts, if you will. They can be stored in a central repository, uh, which is good for a couple of reasons. One is because they're consistent and reliable. So they're already in that uh, centralized store. And also uh, it could be accessed anywhere around the world. So wherever you are geographically, you can still access these images to pull down and use inside of your Kubernetes cluster. So let's go over to killercoda.com. So if we type in to our address bar, killercoda.com slash playgrounds slash scenario slash Kubernetes, you can follow along here. First, we'll run the command to list the raw data at the resource URI. So this is the, the pointer that the API uses to locate the object in Kubernetes. Uh, we can view our pods, for instance, with the kubectl command, so k get, and then we can choose the raw flag. And let's do API v1 pods, which is the location of pods within the API. And we'll pipe that to JQ just to get a little bit more human readable format. And now we see all of our pods running our cluster. But instead of using the kubectl get pods command, so k okay, get pods, for example, and let's do that in all namespaces, um, we, we get just a little bit of a different output there, being that we're accessing that from the raw API. Let's clear the screen here. And next, we'll run a command that will curl the API directly in order to list Kubernetes objects within. We could do curl dash K for insecure mode and then HTTPS colon slash slash 172.30.1.2, which is the IP address of my control plane node. And then that's accessible on port 6443. And you'll see I am getting the message uh, cannot get path, that's because in order to curl the API, we must pass in our client certificate, our client key, and our cert certificate authority. And so that's the RBAC that we were talking about earlier. And I know my uh, control plane IP address. Uh, if I do the command kubectl cluster info, so that, that tells me where my control plane is running at. And again, you'll see the 172.30.1.2 and port 6443. And so let's do a couple more commands here. So let's clear the screen and we'll do a command that will list the admission controllers uh, 
uh, that are enabled within the cluster. The mission controllers are your ability to control certain uh, resources or objects inside of the Kubernetes cluster. So we'll do kubectl exec kube API server control plane. That's the name of the uh, API server pod in the kube system namespace in this particular cluster. And make sure to include the kube system namespace flag. And then within that container inside of that pod, I will run the command kube API server and then pull up the help menu, but then I'll grep out of that help menu, enable admission plugins. So here are the admission plugins that are available uh, that I can either enable or disable. So after the, the words comma delimited list of, right here you'll see always admit, always deny, always pull images, certificate approval, and the list goes on and on. Those are all the admission plugins that we can enable in our cluster. And so let's clear the screen again and finally run the command kubectl git component statuses to see our control plane components and what their status is, whether they're healthy or not, and the messages that they are giving us based on the health endpoints.